What's up? Welcome back. It's going to be a short video. I just was kind of inspired because I was re researching brain chemistry. And the reason why I was re researching brain chemistry is because I, I did a few videos with Macalesi and we, we talk about the inner worlds. But you know, as you guys may know, I'm a more of a scientific guy these days. So even when I, if I make a topic like that, I like to look at it from both angles. And I actually prefer the logical angle. And from studying brain chemistry or neurochemistry, and human beings, you know, I started to see a lot of scientists have actually been doing it. So what I've done is, if you look at the summary of the video, you're going to see links to articles that I think you might be interested in. But the reason why I think for spiritual people, for people who still hold that spirituality is the key to understanding secrets about themselves or the hidden nature of themselves, I actually think brain chemistry, the topic of brain chemistry is important because that got me to start to think about what really, what is really spirituality, right? And... You know, because we come from a world where everyone likes to make things complicated, they like to make things overly deep, a lot of things get lost in translation, right? So you ask the average person, what's spirituality? They'll probably say, oh, it's studying the unseen world, it's studying the spiritual world, the astral world, it's, you know, whatever, it, it's, it's the realm of God, right? And then you ask somebody who's an everyday person and... You know, the majority answers, you might get a religious answer, but you might still get an answer that says, I don't know. Or you might get an atheist who says that you can't prove that spirituality exists or that there's a God or, well, not, not to prove spirituality doesn't exist. An atheist will say you can't prove spirituality is meaningful to everyday life. You can't prove God exists, right? And science is now coming to a point, and, and to me, the only reason why they haven't come to the point completely yet is because psychology is probably not respected by science the way it's supposed to be. So, yes, yeah, psychology is, is obviously a science, but, you know, physics, chemistry, astronomy, biology, definitely a hell to higher standard, right? You know, usually if you're a scientist or a doctor, you're going to get more respect if you say you're a physicist than if you say you're a psychiatrist, right? So, in fact, I mean, come on, psychiatrists, even regular medical doctors might say, oh, they're better than you. Right, so psychiatry, and then sometimes it's not just a simple psychiatry. The present psychiatry we have right now is more based on the work of Freud, which I, I actually respect his work. I have, there's nothing wrong with his work. But I think Carl Jung has probably contributed just as much. And especially if you're into metaphysics, Carl Jung's work. If, if psychology was more Carl Jung's work, two things would have happened. If psychology is number one, if psychology was more Carl Jung's work, and then number two, if psychology was held to the same standard or I guess you could say got the same respect that the other four sciences that I spoke about were, then science in general will be totally transformed. And if, if you would have had Jungism at the center of science, science in general would have confirmed what I'm just saying right now, the sense that spirituality is really based on the ability to alter your brain chemistry that's it right so if you look at the, the brain chemistry of a spiritual person or a person who thinks they're spiritual i guarantee their brains be wired a little different than a regular person who may be atheist just like an atheist brain might be wired differently than a person who's religious and so what naturally happens is even in science right if, if, in science they will say listen if you take a drug you hallucinate you see a whole bunch of different things, right? Whether it be whatever, humans, dead people, aliens, <laughs> you know, sci-fi creatures, whatever it may be. They wouldn't say it didn't happen. They would say, what? You hallucinated. They would say the brain made it up, right? But they would say, okay, you probably hallucinated. And that did happen in your mind. Well, the mind is really a receiver. That's what the mind is. That's what the brain is, really. Well, the brain and mind are two different things. But let's say they're related, obviously. But the, the brain is the physical part of the mind, and it's a receiver, right? And what happens naturally is if a scientist would say, well, if you took drugs and you hallucinated, it, it, it happened in your mind, but it didn't happen outside of your mind. And the key is in certain spiritual systems, let's say yoga, they may not explain it like this, but all they're doing is using, you know, breathing techniques, meditation, you know, being able to still the mind. That alters the brain chemistry Right, so when you look at the video, like where me and Mac Leslie are talking about the inner worlds, right, it's basically the same thing. If you can alter 
or rewire your brain differently than the brain of a standard person, your brain will be able to receive more signals than the average brain. But because regular 85% of people's brains may be wired like that and they depend on only their physical senses, right? They would say it didn't exist because their brain is not picking up that signal. And then if you try to prove it to that person, it wouldn't work until they alter their brain. Now, the problem is when people hear this, they say, well, that means I should take drugs, right? And again, I have nothing, there's nothing wrong with that if that's what you, you know. Again, I'm advocating drug use, but if your spiritual system, if that's part of your spiritual system, it's not my place to say it's wrong, right? The only thing I can say is there might be better techniques because once you understand inner worlds and you understand the fact that your brain is not picking up those signals is actually a sense of protection for you, believe it or not, right? It's actually, so in a sense, when your brain doesn't pick up those signals, your brain's protecting you. So when you take drugs, what happens? You're basically forcing those doors open. And when you force it open, you can't close it. That's the problem, right? So when you're doing it like how some, some, some mystics did, some yogis did, even some shamans from different, you know, not all shamans or bushmen or medicine men or songomas, you know, would force themselves to have an experience through drugs. But when you, when your brain gets used to you being able to do it naturally and you could open and close the doors, then obviously the world changes for you because then your brain could pick up signals that regular people can't. And that's really the key. So sometimes as normal folks, right, because I consider myself more scientific, a lot of people get frustrated because they say, well, I'm, I'm trying to be spiritual and I don't, I don't have the same experiences other people do. But then when you start to understand it from a logical standpoint and you realize there's a reason why yoga, hermeticism, all the energy work takes years because you're training your brain to do it naturally without forcing the open. Even if you take a plant that's not synthetic, yeah, that could be considered naturally, but you're forcing your brain open. So when you do it without forcing your brain open, you then can mathematically, in a way, calculate what is your experience. Now, the difference is, a science would say, well, it's in your mind. It's not, it does, has nothing to do with outside world. And that's where, okay, science and spirituality at that point would break. But if you as spiritual people can understand exactly why some people have experiences and some people don't, that's the beginning of being able to take back your own power. So what I've done is I've put up about six articles. You know, you can look at it in the, in the summary of this video that's talking about this from a logical scientific standpoint. And I think it would help your understanding of what spirituality it really is because we could come up with all kind of different theories about what spirituality is, right? And yes, if your brain gets wired a certain way, if you can alter your brain chemistry at will, your body's going to be different, right, than a, diff than a regular person who can't do it. And then your body <laughs> will become, you know, upgraded to say i don't want to say superhuman i'm trying to keep it logical right but your body will be different and if your mind is different and then your body is different the individual who both you know who has the mind and body will experience more things than the individual who only has the mind just like the individual who has the mind will experience more things than the individual who hasn't opened up the mind or body right so what it does it gets you to logically understand why some people have experiences what those experiences are and it gives you the foundation for being able to at least link science and spirituality to a certain point, at least 90, 95%. Like I always say, if you can get common ground of 90%, then you're in, that's the start of a, of an alliance. You know, as long as it stays like 20, 30% where, you know, you got a lot of spiritual people who think the earth is flat. Why? Because they don't know science. So when they look at that theory, they're going to only look at that theory from what they perceive common sense to be. They can't look at it from a scientific angle. So the more signs you get, literally the more doors open up in the material world, but potentially the more doors open up in the spiritual world, but you'll be able to logically understand it. Hope this helps. Till next time. Peace.